The affirmation we're using this morning for our message is, I am filled with radiant light. And what do we know about uh, the teaching? Words and thoughts create after their kind. What's that mean? It means that the way that we think is fed by the things that we feed it. So if you start out from a negative point and you keep in that negativity in that situation, you will, thoughts in mind, create after their kind. So what's going to happen? You're going to go down that road. And the whole point of this, uh, everything that we do here, isn't that we're going to impart some great wisdom to you. That's not what new thought is about. It is about allowing you to have thoughts uh, in your own mind and heart about the presence and power of God that dwells within you, and then to build upon those in a practical way. And so the question today is, who do I bring to dinner? Does that sound like a profoundly spiritual question? Last week I was uh, in, a, in a mall and I was uh, buying something. Actually, I was buying some underwear, if you need to know. And uh, I was buying underwear and I was waiting in line like all the other hundreds of people, you know. And there's not a lot of happiness there, you know. So everybody's, and so I was practicing our positive, uh, affirmative approach to thoughts in mind create after their kind. So I was kind of in neutral. I wasn't thinking about anything. I wasn't thinking about my underwear. I wasn't thinking about the store. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was just standing there. And I was trying hard not to think about anything. And in in front of me were two young ladies, and they were talking, and so it was really hard not to eavesdrop. You know, it's hard. You just can't do it. It's impossible. And so I tried and tried. I even turned my back, but I couldn't do it. And so they were talking, and one of them said something was lame. You ever have that term? I thought that had gone out a long time ago, right? Lame, but they were saying something was lame. And that word just kind of jumped out at me. And the question is, who do I bring to dinner? So this young lady, these young ladies were talking about lame something or another. And I, had, and I think one was a lame thought and somebody else was talking about, another girl was talking about somebody else looked, did something that was lame. And so there was this reference to lame that was just running through their vocabulary. And it just jumped out at me, this scripture. Now, wouldn't you know that that's what would jump out to me? I'm holding underwear, standing in line, over, over uh, eavesdropping, and I hear scripture just jumping right out at me. But this particular scripture came, and I'll tell you, paraphrase it. And the scripture goes something like this. It says that when you give a dinner, don't invite your friends. Don't invite the people that you know. Don't invite your family. Invite the lame, the poor, the needy. Invite those people to the dinner. Now, an interpretation of that very often is we should be good to the poor, and that certainly is true. But from a practical standpoint, we're going to talk a little bit about that. What's the affirmation today? I am filled with radiant light. I am filled with radiant light. I am filled with radiant light. You are filled with radiant light. You are filled with the indwelling light of the divine, the presence of Christ, that reality and truth within you. And it is there just screaming to get out. And screaming to get out and be expressed to and with other people. The question today is, who do I bring to dinner? What do you do at a dinner? You eat? You're, what's the purpose of the dinner? Socialize, okay. You socialize, you interact. But you feed yourself, right? You get strength and, and sustenance. And so it is, a, it is a whole event. And it says to bring the lame and the weary, the tired, the sick, the poor, all of these things. So what is it that this is talking about if it's not talking about just doing something for the poor? You know, most times we have dinners, we like to invite our friends and our family. So it's not saying you're, it's wrong to bring your friends or family, and we don't use scripture for that purpose anyway. But the, the practical message here is when you bring people to a meal, or you come to a meal, you come to eat and to take something in and to strengthen and empower yourself so that you are stronger physically and mentally and emotionally and spiritually and all of those things. What is it that we take in all the time? Besides air and food and all that, we take in all of the things that go on around us, right? We take in all of that. We take in all of it. Did you ever have a lame thought in your life? Did you? Going, using that term, a lame thought. Do you have a lame part of your, of your life or your body? So what's lame in your life, in my life? Everybody's got something. We've got something that's out of kilter, that's not what it should be. It's not there. It's really not. And because it's not there... We need to always remind ourselves, and Christ Jesus in his life and teaching was always reminding those around him about the presence of God within them 
and the ability that that presence had to bring out the very best that was within them. What kinds of difficulties do you have in your own life and in your own family, in your own household, in the way that you see the world and the way you see other people? The lame thoughts that we have, those lame and difficult thoughts, those out of kilter thoughts are there. And then what do they do? They take root and they continue to, thoughts in mind, it's a quiz, create after their kind. And so the challenge is to see it in ourselves and in others and to be able to feed not that, not that, not the lame, poor, negative thoughts and feelings and emotions that we have in life, but to bring them to the table. You know, and the scripture is filled with stories about the table. Revelation is filled with stories about heaven and, the, and, and the, the, having a bank, magnificent banquet at the end of life. And these figurative pictures are about feeding the reality and truth of who and what you are. It's about feeding the truth. And the truth is, as we say, the truth is that you and I are created in the likeness and image of our creator. And if we're created in the likeness and image of our creator, then we can be like our creator. And Jesus told us how we could do that. And in that process, we begin to change the way that we think and feel about the circumstances and situations of our life. It isn't that the circumstance of situation change, it is that we change. And we change by bringing that negative feeling, that negative emotion, that, that part of us that's not working, or that part of our life that's not working. How many of you don't have the prosperity that you want in your life? Don't put your hands up. So, all right. If you don't have the prosperity you want in your life, how do you, how do you deal with that? Think prosperity, but what do you do? Bring it to the table, right? And you feed it. And what do you feed it? You feed it the truth. And the truth is that if you are in need of prosperity, then what did we say earlier about thoughts in mind? Create after their kind. So if you are in a financial difficult situation and you start thinking about that in a negative way, you go down that road and you get deeper and deeper and deeper into the process. But if you bring it to the table, of your mind and of your heart. And if you know with your inner knowing the truth, then we see poverty. And in the face of poverty, we see prosperity. In the face of ill health, sickness, disease, we see health. In unhappiness, we see joy. In darkness, we see light. What's the light? An affirmation? I am filled with radiant light. You and I are filled with radiant light. You and I are filled with magnificent and unbelievable opportunities and abilities. You and I are filled with the ability to do and say and be all of the things that we would like to do and say and be. And it is the good news that brings us to the point of where we are here today and what this teaching is all about in allowing yourself to apply in a practical way, in a practical way, the teachings that you understood and learned as children and throughout your life, that the presence and power of God is really there and that that presence and power can strengthen and empower you and come forth in a magnificent, wonderful way. So who do you bring to dinner? You bring to dinner all of your troubles and difficulties and you feed them what? What they need in order to be strong and to not be what they are not. So if you think, if you have a financial need, you bring it and you feed it prospering ideas and thoughts. If you read the newspaper and you get depressed and bothered about what's going on, it's there, but what do you do? You see beyond that to the reality and truth of what's there. Hattie Garlish, the co-founders of this fellowship, used to tell us, and we, I've said this so many times, the newspaper is the greatest prayer journal that you can have. And our thoughts are prayers, right? And we're praying always. So our thoughts are going forth. And that gives us the ability to see how it is that our minds and our lives are operating. And if you see the things that are happening around you and you see them more negative than positive, if you see more lack than you see prosperity, if you see more illness than you see health, if you see all of those things and, you, and that's what's being fed in your life, then that is what is being created and is stifling the light in your life. The affirmation is? 
I am filled with radiant light. The good news is that you are filled with radiant light. The good news is that you are created in the likeness and image of your creator. The good news is that you have the ability to deal with every problem and challenge that you have, not because of yourself alone, but because of who and what you are, and because of the gift that has been given to you, not just some of us, to all of us, by the presence and the power of God. And that is the limitless potential of allowing the reality of the Christ presence and, and, and consciousness to come forth in your life and to demonstrate it in the way that you live and the way that you think and the way that you feel. And we see it all the time. We see people healed of diseases. We see people who are in abject poverty who step up out of that into the radiance of prosperity. We see people in the depths of depression that rise into the light of who and what they are because they come to know and realize that truth and that truth will as scripture says set you free so in the week ahead remember that you are filled with radiant light and that you are filled with limitless possibilities and no matter what circumstance or situation greets you you have the ability to see beyond the appearances of what people are saying and doing to the reality and truth that you are in the right place at the right time to learn the perfect lesson that you need to learn and every one of us are exactly and divinely placed where we need to be at any given time in our life. So wherever you are is where you need to be, but where you are is not where you need to stay if it's not the life that you want and that you need. Mm -hmm.